okay the book of enoch and uh taking it from 41 going onwards this is chapter 40 after this i besought the angel of peace the angel of peace who proceeded with me to explain all that was concealed i said to him who are those whom i have seen on the four sides and whose words i have heard and have written down he replied the first is the merciful the patient the holy michael the second is he who presides over every suffering and every affliction of the sons of men, the holy Raphael. The third who presides over all that is powerful is Gabriel. The fourth who presides over repentance and the hope of those who will inherit in eternal life is Phanuel. These are the four angels of the Most High God and their four voices which at that time I heard. I really like uh, thinking and talking about angels, the angelic realm. This is a, a realm of eternal power, unlimited power, and anything is possible, unlimited possibility, and there's the potential to do, the potential potency to do anything at any time, and it is an unbroken world because it is eternal, so it's happening now. And simultaneously it is happening forever so this is the hope of glory to those who inherit eternal life because when they're doing righteousness on the earth they're doing it eternally in the earth which is in the ether the earth uh, ether so so here when we're on the earth we are in the ether and this book is Ethiopian Ethiopia ether so this is the book of the ether so it is so potent in itself after this i beheld the secrets of the heavens and of paradise according to its divisions and of human action as they weigh it there in balances i saw the habitations of the elect so after this i beheld the secrets of the heavens and of paradise according to its divisions so they're different sections and of human action as they weigh it there in balances I saw the habitations of the elect and the habitations of the holy and there my eyes beheld all the sinners who denied the Lord of glory and whom they were expelling from thence and dragging away as they stood there no punishment proceeding against them from the Lord of Spirits there too my eyes beheld <laughs> so here i i like in this book god is uh consistently called the lord of spirits so while he's in this realm he's actually seeing these spirits so it is very easy for him to translate god as the lord of spirits because all he sees are spirits and he is in the ether so he is seeing the spirits so he's seeing god as the lord of spirits the god of spirits and this manifestation is because he is in the spiritual so it might seem obvious but it obviously has to be said or it obviously has to be understood because it's very fundamental to whatever is going on it's very spiritual so it's very inspired it's very inspiring this whole book speaks of the inspiration of the angels, which is the bad inspiration and the good inspiration, which is very powerful, very potent. Okay, So there too my eyes beheld the secrets of the lightning and the thunder and the secrets of the winds, how they are distributed as they blow over the earth, the secrets of the winds, of the dew and of the clouds. There I perceived the place from which they issued forth and became saturated with the dust of the earth. Okay. There I saw the wooden receptacles out of which the winds became separated. The receptacle of hail, the receptacle of snow, the receptacle of the clouds, and the cloud itself, which continued over the earth before the creation of the world. I beheld also the receptacles of the moon, whence the moons came, whither they proceeded, their glorious return, and how became, how one became more splendid than the other. I marked their rich progress, their unchangeable progress, their disunited and undiminished progress, 
their observance of a mutual fidelity by a stable oath, they are proceeding forth before the sun and their adherence to the path allotted them in obedience to the command of the Lord of Spirits. Potent is his name forever and forever. After this, I perceived that the path both concealed and manifest of the moon, as well as the progress of the path, was there completed by day and by night, while each one with another looked towards the Lord of Spirits, magnifying and praising without session, since praise to them is rest. Wow! For in the splendid sun, there is a frequent conversation to blessing and to malediction. So to, to the angels, praise is rest. So it's interest, interest. So it's always a Sabbath. So they are interested in God, into rest every day. And that is their praise. That is how they are appraised. That is how they are raised as angels. The course of the moon's path to the righteous is light, but to the sinners it is darkness. In the name of the Lord of Spirits who created a division between light and darkness and separating the spirits of men and strengthening the spirits of the righteous in the name of his own righteousness. Nor does the angel prevent this, neither is he endowed with the power of preventing it, for the judge beholds them all and judges them all in his own presence. I beheld another splendor and the stars of heaven, I observed that he called them all by their respective names, and that they heard. In a righteous balance, I saw that he weighed out with their light the amplitude of their places, and the day of their appearances, and their conversation. Splendor produced splendor, and their conversation was in the number of the angels and of the faithful. Wow. This is the Fibonacci sequence. This is how everything speaks. The path is the math. And this is the conversion. Like one plus one converts to two. So this is the conversation. This is why we're supposed to multiply. You know, supposed to, to multiply. Supposed to convert. So I beheld another splendor, the stars of heaven. I observed that he called them all by their respective names. So each star has a name, and they understand the names, they hear the names, they respond to names. In a righteous balance, I saw that he weighed out with their light, the amplitude of their places. So they have a name and a position. And the day of their appearance and, their, of, their converg and of their conversion, when they, when they appear, when they disappear, when... Uh, a star is covered by a cloud this is all appointed so especially clouds like this book speaks a lot about the clouds the ether the air the heavens it speaks a lot about the clouds a lot about the clouds so the clouds are really near us and um, this is an aspect of heaven as the stars are an aspect of heaven so they all have names and they hear their names Okay, uh, splendor. Wait, splendor produced uh, in in their in their conversion. Splendor produced splendor, and their conversion was n into the number of the angels and and of the faithful. Then I inquired of the angel who proceeded with me, and explained to me secret things, what their names were. He answered, a similitude, a similitude of those has the Lord of Spirits shown thee. They are the names of the righteous who dwell upon the earth and who believe in the name of the Lord of Spirits forever and ever. Another thing also I saw respecting splendor, that it rises out of the stars and becomes splendor, being incapable of forsaking them. So this is speaking of the influence of the stars. Uh, here... Then I inquired into the angel who proceeded with me and explained to me secret things, what their names were. He answered, a similitude, a similitude of those has the Lord of Spirits shown thee. So he's shown you something similar. All right, wait. Um, I just want to make sure that... So this is 
a merger of different words. So similarity or resemblance to something else. A way which two people or things are share similitude. Similitude. So this this is speaking of altitude, attitude, similitude. Similar attitude. A way which two people or things share similitude. Someone or something that closely resembles another. A duplicate, a twin, a parable. Again, a parable or allegory. Okay, and he spake many things to them in similitude, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow, and he sowed. Some fell by the wayside. So similitude is a parable. Isn't that interesting? So when I inquired of the angel who proceeded with me and explained to me secret things, what their names were, he answered, A similitude, a parable of those has the Lord of Spirits shown thee. So, yeah, the names are the parables. A similitude of those has the Lord of Spirits shown thee. They are, they are the names of the righteous who dwell upon earth and who believe in the name of the Lord of Spirits forever and forever. Wow, I hope you got what I'm getting. So this is a parable, right? And here again, parable is a similitude is parallel this is in the in the previous video parallel which is equally distant from one another at all points having the same overall direction comparison is indicated to hyperbolic geometry said of a pair of lines either not intersecting or coinciding parallel Okay, Invo involving a processing of multiple tasks at the same time. Perpendicular skew, you know. Uh, parallel relationship, which is the parallel worship, relationship, relationship, parallel relationship. A set of parallel lines. Direction comfortable to that of another line. A line of latitude. Remember, similitude, attitude, latitude, altitude. 31st parallel passes through, yeah, arrangement of electrical components, such as a current flows along two or more paths in parallel. So currents flow in parallel. They are arranged. The components of electri electrical components of a current flow in parallel. Okay, this is energy. It moves in parallel. So you, this is how we command energy, uh, energies or angels. They're in parallel angles. Parallel angles, angels. And, yeah, and then we actually do use the Anglo, right? We're reading this in Anglo, angles, uh, angel, angles, parallel. And um, parallel also has L, which is electric. Something identical or similar in essential respect. A comparison made, elaborate tracing of similarity. Similarity, similitude, parallel, which is a parable. Okay, so I'm... Uh, I hope you got what is going on in that verse. A comparison made, okay? Elaborate tracing of, simi of similarity. One of the series of long trenches constructed before... So this is in the military. Constructed before a besieged fortress by besieging force as a cover for troops supporting the attacking batteries. Batteries also energy. They are... Batteries is battling energy. So all battles are for energy, and that blood is a currency. It's a current. It's flowing in your blood. The blood flow is a currency. And the currency is a parallel of your currency, which is your electricity, which is a parallel of what is happening in paradise. It's a parable. They are all roughly parallel. They are, all, they are roughly parallel to line of outer defenses of the fortresses. And in printing, a character consisting of two parallel vertical lines, text, uh, direct attention, similarly marked, not margin, perpendicular skew, construct a place, something parallel, of a path, which is math, which is everything that equals. The equal sign is two parallel lines. This is, this is mathematics. This is math. This is a path. 
it's parallel. A path has two sides. That's a path, but the path is narrow, okay? So um, of a path to be parallel to something else, of a process to be analogous to something else, yes, analogous, an analogy, okay? An analogy. And here it actually says anal. And um, this will tell you more about all of those gay rituals. They use their parallel poles in the anal analogy. It's a parody. It's a parody. That is a parody. Okay, a parody of paradise. So they make a mockery of God. And anal, it's, a, it's, a, it's an analogy of that. So having an, an analogy, which is analysis, when you when you use analysis, when you use analysis of those anal things, yeah, um, corresponding to something else bearing some resemblance or proportion, often followed by two, An analogous, all right. So analogous is um, is also a parable. It's in parallel, analogous, functionally similar, but arising through convergent evolution rather than being homo lo homologous okay homologous homologous showing degree of course correspondence or similarity so this is the homolog the homo the homologous the homolo the homologous <laughs> which is the homosexual which is um uh, correspondence to similarity okay this is two similar beings gay right this is too similar or oh, too similar male and a male this is a parallel but the two parallels meet which is a short circuit okay <laughs> it's interesting so i'd be lost in these words man all day every day because the words are power so you remember the angel who is in charge of all power is gabriel gabriel is gab so this is power this is Gabriel. Gabriel comes and he's in charge of all power because he commands. But uh, Michael is in charge of all virtue. He's in charge of every nation, every nationality, every native has a Michael. Okay, Mikael. Okay. All right, so let's go back to the text. Then I inquired of the angel who proceeded with me and explained to me secret things. You see, these are secret things what their names were so these names name is a noun noun is a naming word so these nouns were he answered a similitude of those has the lord of spirits shown thee so god is showing him so many different things and when i read this book like some of the stuff sounds so redundant like all right oh yeah like he sees paradise and then yeah he sees paradise again so he sees it in parallel so it's like God lives in different dimensions. So he is experiencing God in the rainbow color that he shows to Noah, right? God shows the seven spirits, those seven mountains, one mountain on top of another mountain, but they're all one mountain and there are three and there are seven, the one, the seven candles, one light stand. And, you know, so the three, the seven, the one become one become all just like seven different colors of the rainbow that signifies god's uh, uh bow and all of those are in parallel the rainbow itself is a parable it's a similitude and it shows a similar picture of something that's happening so he says what their names were okay he answered a similitude of those has the lord of spirits shown thee they are names of the righteous who dwell upon earth and who believe in the name of the Lord of Spirits forever and ever. Okay. So, um, here, verse 1, he said, I behold another splendor and the stars of heaven. Observe that he called them all. All right, so he's in heaven, right? And then splendor produced splendor, and their conversation was into the number of the angels and of the faithful. Okay. Their conversation was into the number, into the number, conversation. <clears throat> oh, sorry, conversion, conversion. All right, let's just go. Um, before I really explain it, it will explain itself. Because I know that whenever, when 
ever um, you're, 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 you're in tune with this frequency, what happens? Some energy is converted. Like some, some circuits in your mind are going to be triggered that aren't triggered in mind. But they will be triggered because yours are triggered because it becomes a part of the ether. So once it's in the ether, you know, whether or not like 100 million people see this, it will affect 7 point whatever billion people supposedly on the earth and all of the trillions in heaven. So this is how powerful the ether is, the Ethiopian is. Okay, this is how powerful the ether, the Ethiop is. And uh, it's ethereal. So here, what it's saying is speaking about conversion. Not conversation, but this is where conversation comes from. It's conversion, okay? Act of converting something or someone. Converted uh, uh, here. So you see, under common law, the tort or taking of someone's personal property with intent to per permanently deprive them of it or damaging property to the extent that the owner is deprived of the utility of their property, thus making the tort visa liable for the entire value of the property, the conversion of a horse. In linguistics, the process whereby a new word is created without changing the form often by allowing the word to function as a new part of speech hyponyms okay and obsolete which is always obsolete means the original meaning of the word that is now lost so it's found and it's been obsolete so people don't know what the meaning is and we're about to read the obsolete version it is the act of turning around revolution rotation okay in logic, the act of interchanging the terms of a proposition, as by putting the subject in place of the predicate or vice versa. In math, a change or reduction of the form or value of a proposition, the conversion of equations, the conversion of proportions. All right. So this is a very difficult word. You see, it has 11 different, different, um, uh, different definitions. Okay. And um, remember that uh, nuns live in converts, and in these converts, like the conversion, uh, they 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 are converted, and they have this metaphysical power, which comes from the scriptural text. And we all understand that the people in converts read these texts. This is what they are locked up doing, right? Supposedly, this is what they are locked up doing. Um, studying these texts every day and they are converting themselves okay and that's a monk so a monk is someone who's just like reading scriptures these scrolls scriptures scroll it's a roll it's aspire it's inspired okay and um, yeah so to transform or change to another form substance state or product when you read, when you, when you understand uh, the Mass in Catholic Church, everything is done for the process of transubstantiation. Transubstantiation. When you have a Mass, it's not for you to get the Word. It's for them to perform the Eucharist, which is transubstantiation. All right, let's actually go to this. Transubstantiate. Transubstantiate. Okay to change into substance into another to transmute to change the bread and wine of the eucharist into the body and blood of jesus okay this is all transubstantiate transubstantiate this is all they do like when you go for mass high mass low mass whatever it's not for anything anything besides to transubstantiate but here we have transubstantiate and we have consub consubstantiate. So, so we have these different uh, 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 acts. We have these different paths. We have these different maths. These different equations. And these people who know this had a conversation about conversion. I hope you hear me. 
had the conversation about conversion. One of the most heated arguments on earth. One of the most heated arguments on earth. Most heated debates was not about black and white or blue and black. But the thing that actually, the, the, the metaphysics that run your life, my life, life on earth is based on these two words consubstantiation transubstantiation which is conversion converting which is a parallel which is a similitude which is um how god is able to to use power to do all these different things okay he's able to convert all right and um here partaking of the same substance consubstantial Okay, we must love her that is, is that is consubstantiate with us. To profess or believe in the doctrine of consubstantiation, the consubstantiation church and priests, to cause to unite or to regard as united into one common substance or nature, to become united in one common substance or nature. His soul must be consubstantiated with reason. Okay, so we have consubstantiate have transubstantiate and here it is to change one substance into another which is to transmute okay and consubstantiate is to unite so the two become one and here the one becomes two and this argument consubstantiation versus transubstantiation was uh what the catholics had uh conferences about with aries and people who um support consubstantiation against people who support transubstantiation being the doctrine of the eucharist and uh with the eucharist this is where we get uh power converted okay it's a conversation and uh eucharist uh is the christian sacrament of holy communion a Christian religious service in which the sacrament is enacted so it's in the book of Acts as well okay it's enacted and um, this is an action okay so this this is enacted and be careful it can cause your in action okay it's very very important the words the Gabriel Gabriel angel Gabriel comes and gives you these words mass okay mass it's very heavy mass okay it's communion which is coming together but it's not consubstantiation it's transubstantiation uh divine liturgy okay liturgy divine liturgy church which is er and ch 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 er okay the substances received during this sacrament namely the bread and wine seen as christ's body and blood which are actually called the elements, okay? The elements. The elements as we know it are earth, wind, uh, fire, right? And ether, okay? The, 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 the four elements or the five elements, five is quintessential, but four is the number of God. You remember the four angels, all right? Representing the four elements. But here we have the elements being bread and wine. These are the elements, okay? This is... This is, this is, this is, this is me just reading from the dictionary, okay? I'm not saying this. It's called synonym, synonyms, the elements. So they're called the elements, okay? The elements. Outdoor weather, basic tenants of an area of knowledge, okay? So this is a basic tenant of an area of knowledge, which is consubstantiation versus transubstantiation, which causes transmutation in the Eucharist, which is the conversion of the bread and the water into the body and the blood, which is a common basic tenet of the area of metaphysical knowledge, as the Catholics have made this uh, understood, known, and have created this conversation. Okay, so yes. And fourth, the fourth definition is the bread and the wine of the Eucharist. All right. Yes, this is this is actually very very deep, and I'm actually really feeling this video because like there's a lot of um, things that are making sense, especially when you look into uh, all of the content from the beginning of the book up until this stage, and more is still coming 
coming forth. So here, I'm, I'm still about to explain this. Okay, I'm still about to explain this. So let, let, me, let me make sure that we're still on the same page here, right? So verse 1 and verse 2, chapter 43. I beheld another splendor and the stars of heaven. I observed that he called them all by their respective names and that they heard. In a righteous balance, I saw that he weighed out with their light the amplitude of their places and the day of their appearance and their, convers and their conversion. Okay? Splendor produced splendor and their conversion was into the number of angels and of the faithful. Okay. So all of these stars, these angels, these lights, these spirits have names and these names are um, known and when you use them they work in a certain in a certain in, 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 a, in, in a certain path okay then I inquired of the angel who proceeded with me and explained to me secret things what their names were all right and uh, explained to me what their names were. He answered, A similitude of those has the Lord of Spirits shown thee. They are names of the righteous who dwell upon the earth. Okay. And who believe in the name of the Lord of Spirits forever and forever. So what is really happening here is that what we're being shown is the parallel similitude of this parallel realm where the uh, people who are in, in this place are converted it's a conversion happening because we're speaking of eternity in the ether while we have uh life in the ether in the ethiopia which is the ground okay everyone comes from ethiopia ethiopia is africa utopia and uh yeah i'm not trying to be all controversial but the first utopia is africa right and the reason why, like, I'm so... I have to even put that disclaimer out there is because so many people have accused me of being crazy because I, I said that Ethiopia is utopia. But uh, anyway, so there are people on the e utopia, on, on, on Earth, which is Zion, which is uh, the, the meek will rule on the Earth, the ether. This is the earther, which is the ether, which is the heavens. But then this is above, as above, so below. Ether right earther so the people on the earth are converted into a similitude okay into a similitude or a parallel into a parable into an analogy which is analogous with these angels who it says splendor produced splendor okay so this is a parallel thing what you do on earth reflects in heaven Splendor produces splendor. So what is happening on in, in heaven, the splendor of heaven, and their conversion was into the number of the angels. Splendor producing splendor. The angels into the number of that, which is the number is the path, which is the ratio, the rate. So this rate is also translated into how we understand Daniel's fast, 21 days, and the path of the angel. Okay, and this is the number of the days and all of that. And Daniel is known for wisdom, and he's also known as a person who understood the stars. Okay, and this is why we're speaking about these stars, hearing and having names and things like that. But splendor producing splendor, which is the parallel. So the 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 kings on the earth, the righteous on the earth, are converted into being spirits in heaven, and. They are in rest, interested in God every day. And this is what they're doing. But at the same time, they are living in earth, on earth, which is, you know, the majesty, the power, the glory of God, which is showing the different, uh, different dimensions. So from what I actually feel and see is that they're not just on earth, but they're in different realms and dimensions, or they're everywhere at the same time. But this is the similitude of those has the Lord of Spirits shown thee. They are the names of the righteous who dwell on the, upon the earth. But where is he? He is seeing it in heaven. But he's being shown like you see those over there. Okay, this is a secret. These are secret things. Okay, he says that, hey, you see the angel he's with is saying, do you see those people over there? We're in heaven. You see those people over there, right? Yeah, they are the names. Okay, the nouns and the nouns. Let me show you. Let me show you exactly what this means. So the noun, all right, wait, 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 a name, okay, a name, okay.
they're the names he's being shown you see those you see those they're the names because we're now in the realm of power the ether okay so a name okay noma namo all right now no word okay so we, we we typed in name and the first definition is just saying now no right so let's go to this now no all right now no which is a noun all right so now we have noun. a noun a noun okay which is a word that can be used to refer to a person animal place thing phenomenon okay it's a phenomenon a substance you remember consubstantiation transubstantiation quality or idea one of the basic parts of speech in many languages including anglo-ish angelish english okay and uh here a noun noun non non nom nomen all right and then noun from noun here i want to show you this just change the n to s and we have the mind or intellect the reason both rational and emotional okay so what is being shown there is what news the noose and what is a noose a noose in in terms of the word sounding it's something that ties you it's a tether something that is stringing you it's a parallel thing a noose okay which is the mind intellect reason so here what are you seeing is saying they are the names the noose okay of the righteous who dwell upon earth you see those those spirits over there okay then i inquired an angel who proceeded with me and explained to me secret things what their names were he answered a similitude of those has the lord of spirits shown thee they are names of the righteous who dwell upon earth and who believe in the name of the lord of spirits forever and forever beautiful 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 all right and um another thing also i saw respecting splendor that it rises out of the stars and becomes splendor being incapable of forsaking them beautiful all right Chapter 45, parable, the second. Okay, so this is, so the first one was the first parable. Okay, and uh, I guess we've gone over it in like two videos. And I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. So, so yes. Okay, so great. So, so I don't know. It would be great if like we could, we could actually debrief before moving on to this section because i feel like we just had like a big moment especially with this whole huge parable but anyway so let's 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 stop here with uh, chapter 44 and then we'll just take it on from the second parable in the next video going forward another thing also i saw respecting splendor that it rises out of the stars and becomes splendor okay being incapable of forsaking them splendor Britain standard uh, spelling, okay. Let's see, splendor of the Father, epitaph of Jesus, which is some important points of primitive Christianity maintained and defended. The cons, con, constabstian, constantiability and co-eternity of the Son of God with God the Father. Of asserted or some few anima anima dirgens on treatise of Mr. Gilbert Clark in, entitled Antina Sinisumphus, so far as the said author pretends to answer Dr. George Bull's defense on the Nicene faith, Anima on the treatise itself. Indeed, he expressly teaches that the power of the word, even when he thus humbles himself, does most perfect and nearly con conserve converse with god the father and abiding in him does more ineffably enjoy his secrets in like manner as anthanalus says the world the word himself does not so con condescend 
but that he always remains the un unalloyed splendor of the father all right interesting so this is in 1714 this will be some interesting reading i guess um by george ball <laughs> and he's speaking about consubstantiality as well and um you know they used to use different words uh different letters um, for different uh letters now that we have and um it's it's just very interesting all right so here again splendor okay so splendor here again text first we're here i beheld another splendor and the stars of heaven i observed that he called them all by their respective names and that they heard in a righteous balance i saw that he weighed out with their light the amplitude of their places and the day of their appearance and their conversion splendor produced splendor and their conversion was into the number of angels and of the faithful then i inquired of the angel who proceeded with me and explained to them and explained to me secret things what their names were he answered a similitude of those has the lord of spirits shown thee they are the names of the righteous who dwell upon earth and who believe in the name of the lord of spirits forever and ever okay again another thing also i saw respecting splendor that it rises out of the stars and becomes splendor being incapable of forsaking them all right so splendor is the buzzword in both chapters okay so splendor is um from latin splendor from the verb splendor to shine splendid is to shine great light luster or brilliance once upon a time, on an uninhabited island on the shores of the Red Sea, they lived a Parsi, from whose hat the rays of the sun were reflected in more than oriental splendor. Splendor. Okay. Uh, magnificent appearance, display, or grandeur. Okay. Great fame or glory. Splendor. Fame or glory. All right. And uh, another sidetrack. Nicene Creed. All right, Nicene. This is uh, pertaining to Nicaea, of pertaining to the first. Nicene. Okay, pertaining to the first council of Nicaea conveyed, convened by the Roman Emperor Constantine the First, or to the churches that profess the Nicene Creed, the formulation of which began at this council. Okay, so let's see the Nicene Creed. Name after the Council of Nicaea in 325. Okay, this is a long time ago. But uh, people were already um, sitting down to make creeds. Okay. The name after the Nice uh, Council of Nicaea 325 called the Emp uh, called by Emperor Constantine the First to settle the question of the nature of Christ. Did you ever hear about this? Like. We're going to sit down to settle this, this question about the nature of Christ. So 325, this is when it happened. So Emperor Constantine, here, Constantine, constant, steadfast, okay, constant, constant, this Constantine. So the Nicene Creed, the first official creed of the early Christian church, stating the basic tenets of the Christian faith, including the nature of the holy trinity okay so so this is where it all went down consubstantiation versus transubstantiation so in 325 like who was understanding these words you tell me that you tell me who was understanding like a hey, consubstantiation versus transubstantiation like we're in 2020 right and then like we're speaking of this word like it's alien to most people like 99.9% .9 of all the people even if they're catholic don't know the difference between consubstantiation versus transubstantiation but this matter was settled in 325 and um this is still part of the eucharist which is part of um everything in terms of the holy seat the holy see they know this, they understand this, this is their science, and this is, this is, this is, this is a part of, um, 
every conversion of every holy mass high mass right so this is the first official creed by the early christian church okay stating the basic tenets of the christian faith including the nature of the holy trinity all right so a creed what is a creed credo latin credo this is credit so this is how they actually uh, yeah i'm not gonna go too deep into it but this is the heart okay heart 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 of all of these things this is the heart the heart that's the creed okay that which is believed accepted doctrine especially religious doctrine a particular set of beliefs any summary of or of principles or opinions professed or adhered to a reading or statement of belief that summarizes the faith it represents confession of public or public use especially uh, which is believed comprehensive a creed is a manifesto of religious or spiritual beliefs all right so here it's saying this nicene creed was to settle the question of the nature of christ what a way to put it who like yes who like authorized them to settle this question in this way you know but they say that they had all of these different popes and you know there's so many different ones like uh for example the council of trent a roman catholic council held between 1545 okay and 1563 trento and bologna not italy as a response to the protestant Re reformation and this one is currently known because the protestant church is re uh, relatively new alternative but 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 you know so yeah you know these protests these protests they're gonna have another council okay and they're gonna cancel it okay so all of these what is the Council of Europe? International organization focused on protecting human rights, democracy, rule of law in Europe, with headquarters in Strasbourg, France. All right. So, you see, like, when we have this uh, trans-sub... Trans-substantiate... All right. Trans-substantiation. Conversion of one substance into another. Christianity in Roman Catholic dogma. The doctrine holding that the bread and the wine of the Eucharist are transformed into the body and the blood of Jesus. That is transubstantiation. Okay? So, when we just change this to con. Consubstantiate. Okay? The, an identity or union of substance. So... So here it is saying that God and the Father are one. This is consubstantiation. Could he? Jesus. Oh, sorry. Did I say God and the Father? I, I meant Jesus, the Son of God, and the Father are one. The actual substantial presence of the body of Christ with the bread and the wine of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Impanation. As opposed to transubstantiation. All right, impanation. Impanation. Impanation is from Latin impanatus, natal, and a form of the verb impanare to impanate, impanis, panis bread. Sounds so much like penis. Um, the actual substantial presence of the body of Christ with the bread and the wine of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper as opposed to transubstantiation. So here we have these two things. So transubstantiation, consubstantiation. Transubstantiation, conversion of one substance into another. Consubstantiation is it's already in panacious, impregnated already. It's already in there. It's already contained. In transubstantiation, it has to be transformed. It has to be converted. You know, it's a mathematical thing. It's chemistry. Okay? And um, this is actually the nature of Christ that is being discussed. You know? I wasn't there. In 325. A lot of people weren't. But, you know, now we have this being the Eucharist. Okay, and uh, yeah, 
so yeah uh back to the test another thing i also saw respecting plan splendor which is the light was that it res it, it rises out of the stars and becomes splendor being incapable of forsake forsaking them so the light will not forsake you all right incapable of forsake which is forsake to abandon give up leave permanently to renounce renounce remember the name renounce the name is the noun is the noose the name is the noun is the noose okay so when you're renounced it is you are renamed so Splendor comes from splendor. Another thing also I saw respecting splendor, that it rises out of the stars and becomes splendor. So this is the conversion of it, you know? Whether it's transubstantiation or consubstantiation, what it says is that splendor comes from splendor, all right? Splendor comes from splendor. It rises out of the stars, being incapable of renouncing them, forsaking them, okay? So you cannot renounce you, rename you, the noun, the noose, the name. So the name is so important. So don't forget the name of God. Don't forget the name I am. Name, N-A-M, N-A-M-E. In the middle of name is am. You are the name. I am that I am. That is the name. So don't forget that. I am that I am. It's the splendor, which is I am, which is God, which is the father of light comes from the splendor that i am i am that i am which is from the burning bush which is the splendor which is the light so when you have this part you know it actually makes sense the burning bush that i am which is splendor coming from splendor but when you don't have this there's a fragment in there but still you know the bible is like holographic holy holy spirit holographic spirit holographic so when you cut a small piece of a holograph you don't get a small piece of the whole thing you get like the whole thing but in a small piece so when you read the bible it's holy spirit holographically infused so no matter how how you read it no matter how you slice it you're still getting the holy spirit it's whole it's complete okay even if there is a whole so splendor comes from splendor and that is the i am that i am all right so yeah, we're going to pick this up soon. I'm going to take a little break and uh, see you in a second. Okay.